Well, hello, good morning, and uh, I hope you're being blessed in Jesus' name. I hope you're being encouraged every day by all the provision that God has for you in Jesus Christ. You know, every day is a new day in God, and it's a new experience just to be had for the saints of the Lord. And I hope you are being encouraged. I hope you are taking time to have that valuable and precious fellowship with the Lord and by the Holy Spirit, so that you could be encouraged and God can be blessed, and that he will be glorified through all eternity. So I hope you can join with me this morning as we just go through the Word of God for a short period of time. I pray that the Holy Spirit will just enlighten you, that he will touch your heart and your mind and your soul and your emotions and, you know, bring healing and bring grace and bring all those things that are a blessing to us through the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I just ask, Father, in Jesus' name, that you will bless the hearers of this word, regardless of when it is, Lord, on Sunday or any time through the week. That whoever is listening to this, Lord, that you will speak by your Holy Spirit to them in Jesus' name. So, um, maybe we'll just jump right in, as, as we say, uh, into the Word of God and start to study a few things here. Uh, one of the, th uh, the topic I want to bring uh, this morning is in the form of a question. And I hope the question will be a help to you, maybe, as we, you know, as we look at things differently in, in the future, going forward with the Lord. But, you know, there's a question out there that people often ask, and they say, where is God? You know, and I suppose to, uh, you know, an ordinary person on the street, that's a fair question. They look around and they say, well, where is God? You know, and sometimes they ask that question in, in, um, in the context of a tragedy or a, or a catastrophe or something really bad goes wrong or something evil happens in the world they'll ask that question they say where is God but we can often ask that question as well in terms of you know us seeking after God and how God reveals himself to us we can say well where is God like how do we do that what is that avenue and like one of the um I suppose conditions I'd like to bring to that question just as we get into the word word this morning is to look at it in terms of kingdoms because, you know, one of the things that struck me, uh, especially in the Gospels, when it introduces Jesus, you know, and, and of course the onset of his ministry and as he went about and he chose his disciples and as he went about preaching and teaching. The Bible says that he came to preach the kingdom of God. And of course we know that John the Baptist was the same. He says the kingdom of God is at hand. You know, and we must look at, <clears throat> when we look at uh, things in terms of God and in terms of Jesus and in terms of salvation, you know, we must look at this world as being a separate kingdom to the kingdom of God. So we need to be asking that question uh, in terms of where is the kingdom, the kingdom of God? Because if we seek after the kingdom and how God's kingdom relates to the kingdom of this world, we start to see the answer and it becomes very, very clear. Now, the benefit of this is that we can be very focused and we can see God's way of how we can seek him and how we can be blessed on a daily basis. Because God is very much in the world. God is very much speaking to people. God is very much reaching out to people. But people many times look at God through the eyeglass, I suppose, of the kingdom of this world. And therefore, they can be very, I suppose, uh, deceived, if that's the right term to use. Um, one thing, uh, maybe just as we go in there, we say this is not an... Um, a new question but this this question was there from you know from time of old and we can see it in the scriptures and we start off with john's gospel chapter one and verse 10 um it says this it said he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not and he came unto his own and his own received him not and we all know that this is referring to jesus and these are very deep script scriptures and very revealing even in themselves so it's talking about Jesus when he came into the world, who he was. Now we know he's the son of God and he was God in the flesh. And it said he was in the world and the world was made by him. And the wonderful thing there is that reveals that Jesus himself in his pre-incarnate state, being the word of God, was right there in Genesis as God created the world. And he said, let light be and God and God created man and created the birds of the air and the fish of the sea and so on. And throughout all creation that Jesus was there creating with the Father. And it reveals that here where it says, And the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. You know, so what I'm saying to you this morning is this is not unusual or this is not a silly question. Because Jesus the Creator himself was in the world, but the world didn't recognize him. That seems phenomenal. But why did the world not recognize him? 
And the answer is this, I believe. It's because the world had their eyeglasses on looking at things through the kingdom of this world. They were blinded to the truth and they were blinded to the ways of God and they could not see God or they could not receive God. You know, the kingdom of God is, you know, it's, it's very, uh, uh, very subtle in many ways as we look back, you know, through the Old Testament and right up into the New Testament. And a good example of this would be the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we know that he came, even though he was the king of kings and, and the Lord of lords, and he came into the world to bring forth the kingdom of God. You know, he came in a very, very small, you know, insignificant type of way. And he was conceived by the Holy Spirit in the womb of Mary. And she was a, a very, you know, normal, I'd say even poor uh, girl. And she married a carpenter and, you know, and she gave birth to Jesus. We all know the story. Uh, we celebrate around Christmas time where, you know, there was no room at the inn and Jesus was born, uh, you know, tradition says in a, in a in a stable but you know probably more true in the open field and um, you know when we look at all these it's like an insignificance it's something that the world would never notice but they didn't realize you know that 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 night when Jesus was born that it was the very birth of the king of kings that would rule for all eternity uh, in his kingdom so this is pretty awesome you know but to the average person in the world looking by this didn't look very big, it didn't look very pomp, it didn't look very, you know, um, wonderful to see. But nevertheless, it was very, very subtle. You know, and it agrees so much with the, the ways of God, how God, you know, his kingdom is coming upon the earth, but it's in a very, very subtle manner, in a very small manner. We can see the, the birth of Jesus, we can see the life of Jesus, um, how that he was the son of a carpenter, you know, something very ordinary. Uh, we can see his ministry, yet it was filled full of glory, obviously. When we can see his death, how he was executed, just like a criminal on a cross that day in Calvary. And we see even his resurrection, one of the most awesome miracles that ever hit the planet, when he rose from the dead. Even that miracle was contained only for those that are truly seeking after the Lord, that they would see it and it would be revealed to them. You know, many people just believe the lie that he didn't raise from the dead, but yet he was raised from the dead, Jesus. And the Bible talks about it in the, in the book of Acts, chapter 1, how that he was raised from the dead and he revealed himself after his own passion to those people he wanted to reveal himself to. So we can see that, you know, in that type of fashion, many times, you know, God is whispering to the world rather than shouting at the world. You know, um, if we look at it in a... In a through a human way or through a human fashion you know wouldn't it be better for jesus to to uh, have raised up over jerusalem and lit up the sky and hovered there in front of everybody and would that have not convinced them more you know but see but jesus wasn't trying to you know revive the kingdom of the world what he was trying to do was invite people into the kingdom of god and in order to come into the kingdom of god there has to be a heart change or a heart touch amen Praise God. So there's many scriptures that kind of line in with this. And for time's sake, uh, we can only look at a few of them. But the kingdom of God is very hidden. It's very, very hidden to the ordinary person in the world. And the scriptures here that would line up with that, like with that, um, in John's Gospel, chapter 18, verse 36, when Jesus was before Pilate, uh, Jesus answered Pilate and he said, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would fight that I should be delivered, not delivered to the Jews, but now my kingdom is not from hence. So Jesus himself, when he was before Pilate and um, Pilate was passing judgment in order that the crucifixion could go ahead, uh, Jesus himself said, he said, my kingdom is not of this world. So I suppose the first um, um, point in answering the question, where is God, is we could say that his his kingdom is not in this world. It's not of this world. Amen. Now, the next thing we could look at is in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 3. And actually, I'll turn to this. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 3. Paul the Apostle said this. He says, if our gospel is hid, it is hid from them that are lost. 
So we see many times, you know, people in the world, uh, they don't see the kingdom of God. They don't notice the kingdom of God. And, you know, you could turn around and say to me, well, you know, you can see God in creation. You can see God in the trees and in all the beauty all around us. But you see, if people, if people don't know the Lord, then they're not going to see God in his creation. You know, they must see God first and then realize that it's the creation. But um, even the gospel itself, it says the gospel is hid. And it's hid from those that are lost. Now I want to bring us a little bit deeper because this all seems very unfair. But nevertheless, you see, God has ways of revealing himself to people in order that they will come to him via the way of the cross. And when people come to God his way, they come into not only into his kingdom, but they come into his righteousness and into his holiness. And this is a wonderful thing that God does because he doesn't only bring us into his kingdom, but he saves us. He saves us from ourselves. He saves us from the, the contamination of this world. So, you know, so if you're in this world and you want to stay in this world and you want to be part of this world, well, I'm afraid we can't go into the kingdom of God in that state of mind. We must want to, you know, forsake this world and move on into the kingdom of God in order to receive the wonderful gift of life that God has us for, for us in Jesus Christ. So, um. You know, we can say this um, just for time's sake. I suppose I'll have to skip along. And, and um, Romans chapter 10, verse 20, brings another um, a view of this point that I'm making here. And, and Romans 10 is it's quoting Isaiah 65. Romans 10, verse 20. It says, but Isaiah is very bold and says, I was found of them that sought me not. I was found of them that sought me not and I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me you know and Isaiah was ministering this in Isaiah 55 he was referring to the Jews that had made many many efforts to seek after God they had made many man-made laws and constraints upon people and at the end of the day it became a very legalistic effort for people to seek after God and we know that you know a if you pull away all that and, and, and um, push it all to one side, really all that is, is man trying to make himself good enough to be, to be seen and blessed of God. And we know that our own righteousness is as filthy rags before God. You know, that we must receive the free gift of eternal life and the free gift of the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ and only before we can be accepted before the Father. So, you know, if people take the other route, if they take that route where they try and clean themselves up and they try to make themselves religious and they try to make themselves, you know, acceptable before God. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a failed way. It's a failed method. They can never, ever um, have forgiveness of sins in that. You know, they must go to the one and only true Savior, Jesus Christ, in order to receive that gift of life. Because Jesus is the only one. He's the only one that died on the cross he was the only one that was righteous he was the only one and an important part of this is the only one that was sent by god for that purpose of dying on the cross for the sins of the world you know even hypothetically speaking speaking if there was another righteous man on the planet that could have died for the sins of the world you know that other righteous man and i'm speaking very hypothetically because that's not a fact there was no other righteous man but if there was a righteous man that righteous man could not go and die on the cross for the sins of the world because he was not called to do that it would be an unrighteous act for him to do it so we must see the blessing of the salvation and the way that god has brought to us amen um let's move a little bit closer and i want to talk now about you know how do we then how do we see god how do we see his kingdom how do we how do we see the glory of god and begin to look at things through the way that God wants us and we can actually just slip back a few verses in this and we we'll go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and this is actually bringing this uh, for your own sake if you read through 2 Corinthians 3 and all the way down I can't do it for time's sake this morning but if you read through 2 Corinthians 3 you will start to see that Paul is talking about that the kingdom of God you know it's not written down in letters so that we can recommend ourselves to other people but it's actually written in your heart the kingdom of god is on the inside of you and then he starts to compare the new testament kingdom of god to the old testament and he begins to refer to the time where moses came down from the mountain and you remember that his face shone 
and all the people were afraid of that and he put a veil over his face so that people couldn't see the glory of God and we come to that part in the scripture here in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and it says um, in verse 11 it says for if that which was done away was glorious speaking of the law of course much more that which remains is glorious speaking of the righteousness of God seeing then that we have such hope we use great plainness of speech not as Moses which put a veil over his face so we were talking about that remember Moses put a veil over his face that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which was abolished now what was abolished was referring to there was the law of the Old Testament we know it was abolished in Jesus so then Paul says in verse 14 he says but their minds were blinded for unto this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament which veil is done away in Christ okay so it talks about those people that when they looked at Moses they were not able to see the glory of God why not because there was a veil over his face now it wasn't just a kind of a veil that like a face mask that we see these nowadays but I believe it was a complete veil covering his face that people couldn't see Moses they couldn't see the glory of God they could just hear the voice of Moses and but it says this that their minds were blinded for unto this day long after Moses the Jews uh, there still remains that same veil it's untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament so the veil was upon their heart they couldn't understand but this is the bit I want to show you it says the same veil was untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament which veil is done away in Christ okay so why was the veil in front or what was the veil doing on their hearts as the Old Testament was being revealed simply this the Old Testament was revealing the coming of the Messiah it was revealing the Savior it was revealing his purpose it was revealing the fact that he would die on a cross that he would forgive sins that his kingdom would be set up and their veil that although they were hearing the Old Testament they were not understanding this but then it says this veil is done away in Christ now if there's anything I want to reveal to you this morning is this that if we want to get our eyes opened so that we can see God we need to come to Jesus because Jesus is the one that opened our, our, and just opens our eyes excuse me and just as this scripture says which veil is done away in Christ so the veil is lifted up when you come to Christ now this also triggers a few little other thoughts and I want to bring them to you this morning you remember in the Solomon's temple and you remember in the tabernacle in the wilderness that in that tabernacle there was an item there called a veil and the veil had the purpose of um, separating the glory of God and separating the presence of God from the people and from the priests and all and it represented a holy place the priests went in there once a year and so on now the thing I want to share with you is this you're well, well aware of it I can't dwell too much on it but in that temple the separation from man and God was represented by the veil it was the veil the veil was a type of separation but then in Matthew 27 51 when Jesus was crucified and he gave up the ghost it says this and behold the veil of the temple was rent in twan from top to bottom and the earth did quake and the masks and the and the rocks rent so we know that you know as Jesus died on the cross that in the temple in in Jerusalem that the physical veil was ripped from top to bottom revealing that the separation between God and man was now open that man could come to the father now hold that thought and I want to bring us a little bit deeper there into Hebrews chapter 10 and I'm coming under wild pressure here now for time but I hope you can bear with me and I hope I can and I can speak about this um, accurately and bless you so Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19 says this Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holy place by the blood of Jesus. Because this is referring again to the temple. You enter into the holy place by the blood of Jesus. So how do we come to God? Through the blood of Jesus. It says, by a new and living way which was consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh. So these scriptures here 
Again, I can't take too long to, to speak about them. But these scriptures here is calling Jesus the veil. The veil, and it refers to his flesh as being that veil. So as Jesus died on the cross, him being that veil was torn in two from top to bottom. His body was broken. And yet symbolically in the temple, the veil, the separation between God and man was torn in two as well, revealing to us that Jesus was that veil. In order to see God, I ask the question again, where is God? How can we see God? If you want to see God, you must look through the veil. You must look through Jesus Christ. You must come to God through his way, through his passage. And the narrow way we talk about it, but the narrow way is through the veil, through Jesus Christ. And we see it here, having therefore, brethren, boldness, we enter into the holiest, into that holy place, through the blood of Jesus, having a new and living way. Since this is the only way you can do it, the only way you can be blessed is to enter in through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I pray that you will uh, take this message and be encouraged by it. I have so many other scriptures I would have loved to share with you, but for time's sake I can't. But maybe we can do it again sometime and hopefully in the future we can meet together. And uh, we can have greater times again just exploring the word and talking together about the wonderful scriptures of God. But I hope I've taken that question and broke it open for you this morning. You know, if you want to see God, if you want to be blessed by God, if you want to experience his life, if you want to experience his salvation in the here and now, you know, if you want to have understanding and wisdom in the things of God, then you must come through that one and only way, through the veil, who is Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you and have a wonderful day in Jesus' holy name.